sure you guys can see the headline right there. I just can't believe what kind of a fucking winter this is going to be because we're seeing so many stupid lockdowns happening right now. And oh my God, we're going to focus on Alberta and we're going to take a look at Quebec here in a minute. But I seen this headline and I knew that I just had to tell you what kind of a fucking hellhole Canada is becoming. Honestly, most of my viewers here in the United States and I Thank you all very much for watching. Like I just finished publishing my first video about the uh, the rally in Washington yesterday, and you guys are already flocking to the video and already giving it upvotes. And that's thank you very much. <laughs> that's a, I don't know. It really reenergizes me because there's a lot to take in, and it always seems darkest before the dawn. And I think. People are also starting to wake up and seeing you guys appreciate the work that I do and hopefully enjoying it as well. I hope this is making your time a little bit easier because you're knowing the information better and hopefully I'm providing that service for you. But what we're seeing here in Hawaii, okay, like Rick Rubin or not, he has done a bunch of terrific work in the music industry from Jay-Z through Metallica, Black Sabbath, and some country artists as well. The dude has done everything, and he's super polarizing, but I liked 13. That's the final Black Sabbath album. It's it's good from a production standpoint. Everything that he did, I thought was very good, but the music was lacking. But what can you expect? Ozzy Osbourne has been writing and just fucking phoning everything in post. No more tears, but... <laughs> The riffs are still killer in that one. Thanks, Tony Iommi. Anyways, I could talk about Black Sabbath all day, but that is not the important point of this. We are talking about lockdowns, which are far more depressing than any riff Tony Iommi has ever laid down. Granny, Grammy winning, winning producer. He's a Grammy winning. Jesus Christ. Grammy winning producer Rick Rubin charged with breaking lockdown rules after walking alone on Hawaii Beach. Oh my God. One good thing comes out of Hawaii. One good thing. And I'm not talking about the reboot of Hawaii Five O that looked like hot shit. But Tulsi Gabbard comes out of Hawaii dropping some great legislation on her way out. But the lockdown procedures and Maisie Hirono. Come on, guys. Get your fucking shit together. Grammy winning music producer Rick Rubin was charged with violating Hawaii's quarantine rules after he was apparently caught walking alone on a deserted beach in September. And this is just breaking now because he probably was seething <laughs> at this. No one else was reportedly in the area on the beach at the time, except for a member of the paparazzi who followed Ruben after his arrival in Hawaii on September 1st. According to a report by Garden Island, Ruben was charged with viol violating Hawaii's mandatory quarantine on September 2nd. After a passerby took a video on their cell phone capturing the producer, breaking the state's rules, and what were those? The protocols which were implemented in response to the Chinese coronavirus, the China virus, mandate a 14-day quarantine for off-island off visitors. If this actually took place in, like, April or March or February, you know you could kind of understand it a little bit, but this took place in September after we knew that, yeah, the gestation period of this was probably about four days, and I forget what the science at the time was, but you were only supposed to be contagious for a little while, maybe that's what it was, but the necessary 14 days were kind of being contracted and expanded somewhere around 10, some were 8, some were still at 14, but uh, it, when it comes to this shit, uh, following the science is as simple as just turning off your brain, putting on your mask, and not questioning anybody. So it's tough to say that, um, you know, walking alone on your beach is probably st still should be considered quarantining. Oh my god, he has to go to court for this shit? Next court date is scheduled for February 9th, 2021. Oh my god, but what if he gets it again? Or what if he has to quarantine during that time? Will he just have a Zoom court call? But it is unknown whether the veteran producer's presence will be required at trial. The violation also carries a maximum of $5,000 in potential jail time given to Ruben was simply walking alone on the beach and not doing something as hosting a large event. It is unlikely a guilty verdict would earn a severe sentence. No, and nothing 
if that is actually what he did and that's what the video purports to show no he shouldn't be fucking charged five thousand dollars he shouldn't be charged a fucking cent he shouldn't even be bothered with any of this stuff and i'm not saying that just because i like his work or he's somebody who's famous i don't think anybody should have to face this kind of retarded shit but as you can see here because we're going to take a look first at quebec and there is some fucking bonkers ass shit that is happening there and i was having a conversation with somebody who posted a very nice comment uh, on some of my very, very old content at the beginning of my channel, and uh, we were talking back and forth, and she uh, replied to a reply that I sent to begin with, and you know what, I just want to highlight the absurdity that is Quebec right now, because it is even more bonkers than I could possibly see, because, oh, people are just getting infected at a rate that is unsustainable, and won't somebody please, we get it, we get it. Quebec mulls stricter COVID-19 measures, but decision will be made next week. This was posted on Friday, so, you know, it's a little bit old. I'm sure that he's probably coming down very, very strong on this. Quebec will make a decision early next week about whether or not to implement new restrictions as a second wave of the novel coronavirus, the China virus pandemic, continues to gain steam only because you guys keep reporting on it and it keeps getting fucking clicks. Premier Francis Legault says he is concerned about the evolving situation and says in the coming weeks are critical to limiting the spread of the virus. Uh, let me just see here. Okay, December 11th. I swear on my grandmother's grave that I have seen the coming weeks are critical to liter limiting the spread of the virus has been in every cocksucking article since the beginning of this fucking pandemic. I'm tired of seeing these non-meaning words by these hack fucking journalists. There's no decision made so far, Lego said, referring to a new rule, ro rolling out the new rules. <sighs> Lockdowns don't work. Legault's de declaration comes as calls f <laughs> grow for the government to introduce a new temporary lockdown. Who's calling? Who's calling for this? Are you guys governing by Twitter? I think that's how it's fucking working at this point. To introduce a temporary lockdown over the winter holidays. No, just a bunch of socialist fucking cat women. That's the only people who are actually fucking calling for this shit. Quebec recorded 1,713 new cases and 53 new deaths contributed or attributed to COVID-19 health crisis on Friday as hospitalizations also spike once again. There are 23 more patients at hospital. <laughs> just spiking oh my god fuck off and it's yeah for a total of 871 you are meaning to tell me that um hospitals in quebec the second most populated province in canada 870 patients that have covid that is overwhelming the hospitalization system yeah if it is that's just a mark against socialized medicine, which um, my American viewers, if you guys are taking the time to watch this, thank you very much. If you're taking the time to watch this, you're going to realize that, um, yeah, it sucks a fucking dick. I will never say anything nice about our fucking healthcare system. You got to wait forever and it is subpar care at best. You know why? Because nothing free, <laughs> and I use free very loosely, and especially in Quebec when your fucking tax rate is around 60 some odd percent. Hi, New York and California. No, and even over here in Alberta, we get uh, our provincial tax rate is somewhere around 35, and then the federal, it always works out to being somewhere around 50%. Or everything that sucks a dick, anything that the government touches is terrible, from road construction to snow removal to policing, which are right now going around neighborhood to neighborhood, just making sure everybody is adhering to the fucking lockdown rules. I can't speak out of turn when it comes to Quebec, but I'm sure it's probably not that dissimilar because they are in or going into the red district there. I don't know. I think they got a the traffic light system there, but they are right now, or at least heading into level four. That would mean red. And what does that mean? Well, I got it pulled up right here. It's the maximum alert. Maximum alert includes targeted and additional more restrictive measures that could extend to prohibiting non-essential activities and situations where risks cannot be sufficiently contained while avoiding the generalized confinement that is experienced during the first wave of the pandemic as much as possible so because these restrictions worked so well in the spring <laughs> we got to adhere to them again even more strictly this time around okay words cannot express how fucking stupid this is measures in force so you have absolutely no leeway when it comes to this at home a house and cottage indoors 
or outdoors. Prohibited. Visitors from another address. You can only congregate with the people that you know. Unless you have to go to work, right? Oh, okay. But that's different because then you'd be in essential service. And uh, we're not going to lock everything down because we just want to give you enough leeway so you still think that you have a little bit of freedom until they start to curtail everything else. But yeah, okay, make sure that all of the big box stores and all of the big grocery chains are still open, but uh, your local bodega has to close because reasons. Allowed a single visitor from another address for single people. So if you live alone, one other person can come over. So good, they want to keep their prostitution business or their sex work business still open. Thank you, Quebec. Informal caregivers. Oh, okay, people who are providing a service or support. I think that gets taken care of in the first point. And labor for planned work. So you can still have repairs done. Oh, thank God, in case your toilet overflows, you can call in Pierre the plumber. Private indoor or outdoor gatherings. Prohibited. Travel between regions and cities. Not recommended. <laughs> Don't recommend it even to a green, yellow, or orange zone and outside of Quebec. Yeah, so don't even bother going outside anymore. Preschools and elementary schools. Only one stable class group is permitted with no physical distancing requirement at all times. You know how they say that uh, even if you get vaccinated, you can still carry the disease? Yeah, that's uh, that kind of fucking stupid shit that they just don't care about when it comes to kids because, yeah, we kind of know that they don't get sick or they have, like, the lowest propensity for getting sick or manifesting any symptoms but uh yeah they can still transmit it because you know fucking follow the science right and i just hate how they're enforcing kids to wear masks in schools and i can see them all sitting on the bus whenever i'm outside and running around while that is still allowed by our benevolent government or just standing waiting for the bus first thing in the morning and they all got their mask on when they're outside it is depressing beyond all measure honestly and even grand prairie here it's a very conservative area and uh sometimes you see like fathers walking their kids to the bus in the morning before they have to go to work or you see mothers doing the same thing but i especially see this with fathers when they're walking with their kids they're telling them to take off their stupid fucking mask and uh, you know what a little bit of my humanity gets restored whenever i see that but um you see these fucking tyrannical mothers that are standing six feet away from other people and they've got their mask up and they're making sure that their little fucking Susie or their little Johnny is perfectly masked outside in the cold exhaling water droplets into a mask and first thing in the morning it's like up here right now in Grand Prairie it's around 10 to 20 below first thing in the morning over the weekend it's been cold as a motherfucker but no kids should be waiting for the bus right now unless their parents really suck but you can just see those frosty ass masks just getting fucking colder and colder. And I think actually having a wet frozen piece of cloth against your face is probably going to do more damage to you than a disease that carries a 99, especially in that age range, a 99.98% survivability rate. I think it's fucking retarded. Let's see what else I got here. Sports and recreation. Don't even bother thinking about it. Indoor and outdoor sports and recreation facilities may remain open for individual activities, but access to locker rooms is not permitted. So, are they also clothed? Oh, okay. However, washrooms remain available. Okay, I was just going to ask that. It's like, okay, if locker rooms are closed, because I've been in gyms since I was 16 years old, and the fucking locker rooms for middle school before that too and um in order to get to the bathroom you have to go through the locker room so are they cordoning off all of the locker rooms as well but you can only go to the shitter that's at the back of the locker room where you got to pass through all the lockers it's so dumb it's just dumb i don't know i still have yet to hear a cogent argument for all this shit long and short of it yeah uh places of vice are still open uh places of protest and social justice remain open all you need to do is just call your congregation a protest and you should be able to go ahead and successfully celebrate thanksgiving or not even thanksgiving at this point jesus christ probably next thanksgiving <laughs> don't be surprised if these are still in effect next year at some point but uh, i think the people will probably revolt by then at least i hope so no but honestly if you guys are getting together for christmas or new years all you need to do especially for christmas just celebrate a black santa and everything will be cool just hold up your fists if uh bylaw officers decide that they want to leer into your windows but that's quebec and uh that's what they've been going under and they've been setting up check <laughs> fucking 
checkpoints on bridges going into these red zones and now that the entire province is going to be going into a fucking red zone dude if you're a police officer or if you know a police officer who's enforcing any of this stuff you really really need to start thinking about uh, which laws you enforce and how they are in contradiction with these fucking draconian lockdown measures but speaking of which i said i've been alluding to this for the past few days and as of tonight as of 12 midnight well i guess it would have been this morning yay december 13th the entire province of alberta who is undergoing such a great wave of of deaths and new cases going under well, similar to what quebec has been going under because jason kenny sold out his constituents and um assured that he will be receiving a crushing defeat in the next election because the only way that he would have survived and prospered in the next election is by telling the people who are calling for lockdowns and there aren't many would have been to just told them to go fuck themselves and keep the province open because kowtowing to them now only emboldens their calls they sh what they're calling right now is oh you should have done it earlier because it's never enough for them and the people who are anti-lockdown because oh, i don't know they can fucking read and see the risks for themselves just realize that yeah he fucking sold us all out and killed off whatever remaining small businesses there were so i'm just gonna go ahead and give you a read down of what types of numbers are stimulating these draconian lockdown measures in alberta as you can see here, the pro in, this is specifically Calgary. The province has recorded the largest number of fatalities in a single day for the COVID-19 pandemic, with the Edmonton zone bearing a bulk of the tragic circumstances. I'm not even making this more dramatic. This is word for word what CTV has put out. Alberta Health announced 22 people have died as a result of coronavirus in the province Sunday, pushing the total fatalities from the disease since February to 719 probably the same amount of small businesses that have been closed just in Edmonton alone. It has also reported 1,717 new infections. Well, at least the number is aesthetically pleasing to look at. The Calgary Zone saw three new deaths. I want you guys to strap in for this shit. A male in his 80s, a female in her 80s, and a female in her 80s. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. I think it gets any different. Yeah, in the Edmonton zone, 16 people. Yeah, but um, same type of people, same type of people. And oh yeah, one correctional officer from Fort Saskatchewan's, I think it's a medium security penitentiary or could have been upgraded. I fucking don't care. A bunch of savages are there. He died. He was in his 50s and he looks overweight and we don't know what his comorbidities were. I don't know. Maybe he could have been just a picture of health, but you know what? Even one life lost during this pandemic is too many i'm sure they would have wanted the entire economy the entire world's economy to come to a screeching halt at least that's what um we should all believe right fuck off here are alberta's stronger public health measures bend the curve it used to be flatten prolong stop sit on this is so stupid this is so stupid Due to Alberta's high case numbers, aggressive action is required now to protect our health from being our healthcare system from being overwhelmed. <laughs> oh my God, it's people in long-term healthcare facilities. I don't think there are too many 80 and 90-year-olds that are still thriving in the fucking home that they raised all of their kids in the fucking 1950s. These current, the current situation is critical. These mandatory restrictions apply province-wide. <laughs> oh, I showed you guys what the uh, numbers were in my previous video. And um, for this to be province-wide is functionally retarded. Yeah, and they're going to be in place until at least, at least, I wish I would have bolded and underlined that, but I'll at least do that with my voice. At least until January 12th, 2021. Yay. Health officials are monitoring the situation and will adjust measures if required. <laughs> Not lighten them up, though. They'll just go ahead and make them stronger. Gathering restrictions. Don't even bother thinking about it. Effective December 8th, and remember this will continue four days after a month, all indoor and outdoor social gatherings are prohibited. This will be enforced with $1,000 fines. You can go fuck yourself, okay? If I see any police officer going into somebody's house trying to break up 
indoor and outdoor gatherings. I don't know what I can legally do, but I will definitely be taking pictures and videos of that, and uh, I will put a little special segment together for that for you guys, so... I vehemently hate all of this stuff and want to bring as much light to it as humanly possible. Mandatory restrictions, province-wide, be scared, always scared. All indoor and outdoor social gatherings, public and private, are prohibited. Close contact are limited to household members only. People who live alone can have up to... Oh my god, at least we get a little bit more... If you are single and live alone, then Quebec, oh my god, two close contacts. So you can actually see your mother and your father. Wow! It must be the same two contacts until the end of time. Oh, I'm sorry, until the duration of the restriction. If close contact does not live alone, visits cannot be held at their home. Fuck off. Single parents who only live with their children under 18 are permitted to have up to two close contacts. Fuck you too. This does not apply to co-parenting arrangements. So as you can see that there are uh, just uh, willy-nilly rules being put into place. Sorry for the strong language. Service visits from caregivers, health or child care providers. Home maintenance and repairs. Mutual support group meetings. And that's what you guys should call your Christmas and New Year's gatherings. Mutual support groups. Just say somebody's fucking fallen off the wagon and everybody hears a sponsor. Something like that. You know what's fucked up about this? Because the old folks are dying, you're not allowed to have a fucking funeral for them. So they're telling you that we need to lock down everything because people are dying. But then when they die, we're not allowed to mourn the losses of those. Well, at least 10 people are supposed to. Oh, and you're only allowed to go to the worst part of a wedding anyways. The receptions are not permitted. Because there will be no fun in our future. Places of worship. Alternatively, just do it virtually. I'd bore you with the rest of these fucking stupid restrictions, but they all pretty much read the same. Any place where you can go and have fun or go be healthy is closed because the coof. I am waiting for the rebellion to happen. Uh, I haven't heard of any protests happening specifically in Grand Prairie, but... Oh boy, if this goes on any longer, I know I've got nothing to lose, so we'll be figuring something out. But I know that there are some taking place in the larger cities like Toronto and Calgary. Edmonton is too fucking faggy liberal to actually do anything. It's fucking really sad to see. And I wouldn't even think anything's happening in BC because, well, Vancouver is kind of like our version of San Francisco where there's probably more overdose deaths that have happened than actual people dying from the commie cough so i don't think they'd be doing any protests but dude if this shit keeps getting more and more insane and especially with these new mail-in voting rules that i'm seeing justin trudeau pushing out and i'm not seeing any other canadians talking about please watch my video on c19 if you guys are concerned about that because oh my god we are heading for a one-party communist hellhole COVID-19 has been the single largest overreach of government interference of all time, and people are starting to get sick of it. I just don't know if we're going to get to that point before it is too late. So, the more you guys know, the better prepared you are, and the more information you have, the better in my opinion. So, I will leave that one there, and we're going to head over to Britain for the last one. Yeah, buddy, we got to talk about our... our founding fathers here for a minute so i'm i'm looking forward to that i thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone